blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth. And the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spreads out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. 
See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and other Gentiles, I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem, they put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Through the Paschal mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and all his works and promised to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? He was conceived by the power of believe in God the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the rest. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord. I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Four times a year, four times a year, 
our church sets aside special days for baptism. We can have a baptism at any service, any Sunday, but four times a year, whether we have a baptism or not, we are given the opportunity to renew our baptismal covenant, the vows that we made and that were made on our behalf, but the ones that really shape our identity in Christ. So I don't know if that was a surprise to go, you know, for a solid Episcopal community like this to go directly from the, the reading of the gospel into the, bapti- the renewal of vows instead of the sermon. But it's meant to be a little bit of a surprise. Think back to John the baptizer. He had his own ministry. He did not follow Jesus. He prepared the way for Jesus. But he didn't know who the Messiah was going to be. But he prepared the way. He preached the truth that he knew. And he offered a baptism of repentance. Repentance meaning a change of of mind, a change of heart, and a return, specifically, a return to God. And then Jesus comes. John has heard of him, and if you read the Gospels, you'll find that you know, John the baptizer has disciples, and Jesus has disciples, and they don't really get along. It might be like Catholics and Episcopalians, or Catholics and Baptist, or whatever the case may be, they follow a different way of listening to the truth of God. And then Jesus comes to John, and he asks John to baptize him, and John recognizes something. At first he says, no. He protests. And Jesus says, no, we must do this. And something in that moment is a conversion experience for John the Baptist, the baptizer. And he, from that moment, obeys. Think about this. He goes, he's the one preparing the way, and he starts off against what the Lord of life tells him. And then he perceives something. So much so that he obeys. And he baptizes Jesus. Some of you know that I came from the Diocese of Alabama. And in the Diocese of Alabama, there's a camp called Camp McDowell. And it is a raging fire of spirit for the Diocese of of Alabama. But for everyone who grows up going to camp there, I did not, but, um, but pretty much every Episcopalian in Alabama did. At the top of the hill that goes down to the camp, the road splits. And there is a giant fork, about eight feet tall, a fork in the road. And so everyone goes, grows up going to Camp McDowell knowing there's a fork in the road. And the the girl's side of the camp is on one side of the fork and the boy's side of the camp is on the other. But I thought about that when I read this, this gospel because baptism is the fork in the road. If you choose baptism, if you choose Christianity, however you understand it, then you choose a path. You choose this way and not that way. Doesn't mean you hate the other way, it just means you have chosen through repentance, through a change of heart and mind, to pay attention to God and to listen and obey Jesus. And for Episcopalians, when we want to ask the question, what have we chosen to listen and obey? How do we understand that? How has our tradition, our interpretation of Scripture, the inheritance we've been given in this church, where is the clearest expression of that? It's in the baptismal covenant. Some of you uh, joined George uh, for in this morning in formation for the inquirer's class. For some, that might be preparing for baptism. 
For others, it might be preparing to be received into the Episcopal Church from another uh, denomination. And for some, it may be just deepening, uh, deepening your understanding of what it is we are and what our identity is made of. And, and it was a complete accident that today, the baptism of our Lord, the second Sunday of Epiphany, was the day that we started confirmation for the youth and inquirers for adults. But it's just beyond perfect. Because I, this, bat, this, this bulletin you hold in your hands, these are just the most magnificent readings of Scripture. Take it home. I ask the youth to think about this. Take it home. Read it. Read the, the baptismal covenant. Maybe pick one question and pray on it every day. Ask God how you're called to live this vow right now with where you are in your life because it's different for all of us. Maybe read them all every day, whatever you have time for. But everyone here is here. You've chosen to be here. This isn't 16th century England where you had to go or else. We have been given such a gift, our tradition, our prayer book, our liturgy, our way of becoming Christians that doesn't end until we draw our last breath and whatever continues from that point forward continues, but it continues. But while we are here, while we have the Episcopal Church in our lives, let this be our guide. Let this renewal of baptismal vows always be bound near to us. Reflect on it. Learn it. Pray with it. And be changed by it. And be open enough to be like John, who was surprised, but who paid attention and was converted in that moment to obey Jesus. Amen. And the baptismal covenant takes the place of the creed. And just that's all surprises for the day. All right. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. We give thanks for the ministries of this parish, especially for our parish life and hospitality committees. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Scott, our bishop, and Frank, our bishop-elect. For our clergy, George, John, Bill, and Irwin. <clears throat> for our seminarian, Rainey, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for Donald, our president, Brian and Henry, our governors, the leadership of the CSRA, and all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. We pray for all those who are serving our country at home and abroad, especially Joe, Dylan, Trey, Graham, Toby, 
Zach, Jonathan, Joe, Sylvan, Zachary, Stephen, and Chris. We pray for the welfare of our congregations in Americas and Calvary and in our companion diocese of the Dominican Republic. We pray for the congregations in Asia, Reconciliation, and St. George. We pray for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially Benita, Janet, Bobby, Jean, Anthony, Bill, Margaret, Denise, Martha, Aaron, George, Louis, Diane, Sid, Bob, Pete, Reba, Keisha, Lois, Sid, Alice, Norm, Lisa, Julie, Jenny, Joseph, Jade, Chrissy, Matt, Daryl, Diane, Joseph, Betty Sue, Shelby, Teresa, and Bernice, and for Walton, and for Barbara Albright. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for all who have died, especially Wendell Tanner and Olin Veal. Give to the departed eternal rest, O Lord. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors and ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Good to see you all here this morning. We're glad you're here with us at St. Paul's. If you happen to be visiting, we look forward as well to getting to know you a bit better and having a chance, some conversation on the front steps as we 
gather out there following the service. There are a number of announcements in your bulletin. Primarily, I will mention that this coming Wednesday is our monthly parish dinner up in the River Room. So we do hope that you will come and be a part of that. Information is in your bulletin on how to RSVP, but if you forget to, please and come be a part of that uh, as well. Um, John mentioned confirmation class, inquires class, beginning. Uh, if you think to yourself, wow, that sounds interesting, uh, it's not too late. Come on next week, uh, we'll catch you up and you'll be right there with everybody else, equally confused and ready to go. So, um, really everything else I will let stand on its own. Please take the time to read those and respond as necessary. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. Paul and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. This is the table, not of the church, but of the Lord. It's made ready for those who love him, and for those who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith, and you who have little, you who have been here often, and you who have not been here long, you who have tried to follow, and you who have faith. Come, because it is the Lord who invites you. It is his will that those who want him should meet him here.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of this congregation, I send you forth bearing these holy gifts that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body because we all share one bread, one cup. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us this day and forever. Amen. Amen.
peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ms. Lord Manduke.